It's really about them pitting them against the cops, Big Nick and his boys, who um, are from the same world uh, that the gangsters are. And um, they kind of grew up together, around each other, know of each other. And it's about their attempt to, to stop them. Um, but we meet the cops when Big Nick's life is at least falling apart. You know, his wife leaves him, takes the kids, total nuclear meltdown disaster. And we meet him right at that point. And we meet Merriman when he's getting out of prison and deciding to basically take on the biggest heist of all. So these two sides are going to, going to clash. And it's, it's about the inevitability of that, um, all centered around the big heist, of course, and about the uh, sort of the, the fatalistic, you know, it's, the destiny that they're going to basically clash and uh, the tragedy of that really because we get to know all of them, get to know all their lives and the inevitability of their sort of demise is what we're building towards. The Alameda Corridor scene. So we took over four city blocks. We had, I think, about um, a third of a mile of highway that we sealed off and we had, I think, about 250 cars and I'm not exactly how many, sure, how many rounds of ammunition we should be fired, but I think it's in the, around 10,000. Um, I think we destroyed about 50 cars. Um, and that's, of course, the final action scene of the film where the two sides go to war. Um, and we want it to be um, urban warfare, Black Hawk down the streets of LA, you know, the streets of Wilmington, really, or Harbor Gateway to be specific. And, um, and it sort of spills out of this traffic jam in the Alameda Corridor into a neighborhood. And then when we get to the neighborhood, it's a little bit like the scene of Point Break, where it's just constant running and jumping over fences and walls, running through backyards and alleys, and it's this constant, it's this inertia, this constant movement. Um, and uh, it, was, um, it was freezing cold, we shot it, and it was snowing and sleeting and raining and minus 10 in the morning, so it, it was tough. It was tough, it was exhausting. But, um, uh, you know, when the going is tough, the tough get going. So it was great. We killed it. The sequence is going to be, I think, incredible. So Jerry Butler plays Big Nick. Um, Jerry's, um, I, I think he, the reason why he wanted to play the role, and now that he has played the role, is because so much of him is Big Nick. Um, that, you know, he's from Scotland, he's a big dude, he's a clansman, he's a tough guy, and this brought out all of that in him, you know. He sort of tapped into, um, maybe for the first time since playing Leonidas, you know, he sort of tapped into that sort of like uber alpha male, you know, just, you know, rabid dog kind of thing. Um, and he'd always, you know, joke with me that I'm Big Nick, but he, it, it, he uh, um, it was amazing to watch him in the role because he just completely embodied it. Once he got down like the accent and like the whole sort of body language and the look, it's pretty much when he got the look on right before he started shooting with sort of fi the final touches of like, you know, the facial hair and like his jacket he wore and the, the boots that he wore and all that kind of stuff. Once we drilled down on that, he was unbelievable. I mean, every single scene, he just, he just killed it. Pablo brings so much to the role of Merriman. I mean, he's, um, Pablo's hyper-intelligent. Um, and he also has a great authority. When he walks in the room, it's like, whoa, like, there's something, and that dude's done something in his life. You know, he's, he's strong, he's tall, he's athletic, he's got this look, this intense look. Um, he doesn't blink a lot, he looks at you. You know what I mean? Um, and Merriman, being the leader of this crew, has to have supreme authority. And he also has to feel um, menace. You know, he has to exude menace. And Papa does that brilliantly. He's phenomenal at it. And he plays the quiet moments, like the looks in between, like flawlessly. I wanted to be, cast as many guys that are from the world that were the movie's about as possible. And he's got that L.A. kind of swag, you know? Um, and at the same time, Donnie has to be hyper-intelligent, and O'Shea is a brilliant kid. He's he's incredibly, incredibly bright guy. Um, but at the same time, he's got that rooting interest, like he's very, very sort of lovable. Um, but he's got gangsta in him, too, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's, you know, he's got that whole, 
you know, that L.A. street thing going on, which is just killer. Um, and uh, so you have to like him. He's got to sort of be tough enough, but not too tough. It's a very, very tough balance with that character because you have to believe that he would hang with that crew because these guys are, I mean, the baddest of the bad. They're all alpha males, and he has to be able to hang with them. But at the same time, he has to maintain an innocence. So we feel for him. He just brings authority. You know, he's got sort of a, he's got a phenomenal gravitas and what he's been through in his life, you know, how he grew up in the streets. I mean, he's the real deal. You know, been shot nine times, the whole thing. So he doesn't have to fake anything. I mean, he can just stand there and look at you, you know, and that's all he needs to do. He's like kind of that old school kind of thing where he just has this look that I love. Um, so he brings sort of a threat and authority to the role that that, that Ensign has. You know, Ensign was always, you know, is, is a big, tough dude that just walks around, just looks at you and you're intimidated. And 50 brings that all day long.